All right, so we got all those gaskets out of there. I'm actually gonna clean that further, but before we do, I'm gonna pull out your fuel fitting here. It's got three O-rings on the end of it. I've actually already replaced these, but uh, like when I took these off, uh, again, the same kind of plasticky feeling. The rubber was all sorts of cracked out. And uh, if you're just kind of getting fuel smell on your bike, but you're not seeing any drips, sometimes this can just slowly let out a little bit of fuel. But since it's not very much and it doesn't come out all the time, uh, it dries, but you still kind of get that smell where it <clears throat> kind of evaporates, but you don't get anything kind of on the ground. So try and pull that out and uh, could be a problem there. All right, so before we go in and clean these up thoroughly, I'm gonna pull out you the slide here. Again, we'll remove this O-ring. All carb kits come with a new one. Pull that guy out of there. There we go. Quick and easy adjustment. Just pull that out of there. That should come up with your needle. Just like that. It actually kind of looks like it's worn a little bit. Can I see how we've got kind of some wear marks on there? Let's check to see if our new carb rebuild kit comes with a new needle. All right, so here's where you can actually go wrong with a rebuild kit. This needle here, if you can't tell, there are no grooves on it. There's no adjustment grooves on it. We're actually not going to use this needle, but we might end up actually purchasing um, a second needle from here. So yeah, we've got kind of dings and actually scratches kind of in this needle here. So that can actually allow a little bit of fuel up through there. So we're gonna use most of the items in this kit, but we are not actually going to reuse the needle. The safety torque screw, surprised they even use that. So that brings that up. I'm gonna pull that right up out through there. When reinstalling this, see how they're kind of matched up and they look the same as far as the taper goes? That's wrong. The, the hole goes at the bottom. Uh, it's an M, it's not a W, and uh, make sure that's just facing down. So we'll just go ahead at this point and pull out our throttle cam. Let it unwind nice and gently. Straight out like that. Looks like there's actually some bearings that this rides on. You just gotta spray it a bunch with some, some card clean, dissolve the grease in there, and this kind of re-grease it. I mean, look at all that gunk that's been in there. Yeah, that'll make your throttle feel a little on the sticky side. Let's see if we can get a good before shot. So now I'm gonna take all these pieces here, go give them a deep clean, and when we come back, we'll start our reassembly. All right, and we are back with some nice clean carburetor parts. It's a new day, a new outfit. Turned out pretty good. So this is actually the mid body right here, so we'll start with that. And with that, this needle carrier here, this needle cage, uh, we've got a set of seals on the inside here that mate up with the mid body like that. So let's just start off with that. That takes this funky looking guy. So that just rests in there like that. And we've got a uh, little orifice there and a little orifice there. So we're just gonna line those guys up and then bring the mid body down onto it. Keep our thumb holding pressure you know, I was actually looking in the manual before this and it doesn't even show any directions or any how to on even rebuilding the mid body of this. So definitely one of those secrets that not many people know about. It makes a big difference though, if you're stuck. And shoot, I'm just doing it as a precautionary or as a preventative maintenance in a way. Another thing you should check too is Skipping ahead here, when you're installing your carburetor, be sure, one, you have clamps, and two, that they seal well. I've actually had this FCR carb on a YFZ, and uh, 
a long time ago, dumb kid, you know, just, well, the boot fit on this side, boot fit on that side, sounds great, good to go. I think I had a clamp maybe on this side, but not on the intake side. And in tuning, I actually went up on the main jet, uh, I think by two sizes. Well, then I got wiser and I was like, you know what? We should probably get some clamps on this. So I clamped it down. All of a sudden it started running like crap. So I had, uh, I'd obviously tuned it for it being so, uh, so loose and, and uh, so lean that uh, after clamping that back down and being a smart person, I, uh, yeah, we ended up going down like two sizes here in the main, two or three sizes, honestly, uh, and then down one size in the pilot. So make sure that uh, your baseline, when you go to reinstall this, you got everything squared away, everything's tight, everything's new. So we'll move on to our next set of gaskets. And that's gonna be this guy here. And you know what, honestly, before that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help us out with a little bit of seal grease. Tech tip number two, or three, wherever we're on. Using a little bit of seal grease, and I say specifically seal grease, because this won't eat into any rubber. Make sure you use seal grease. Uh, it'll keep it in place. I actually got a question the other day. Uh, hey, I took my carburetor bowl off, and uh, now I'm gonna put the gaskets back in. And it's like, what the heck? These things, uh, it always seems too big or too small. And a um, little trick is just to use a little bit of grease. And uh, that'll do two things. When you go to put it in place, you won't stretch it. You will actually glide across the top of it. And then once you've got it in place, the seal or the grease actually ends up kind of helping you out almost like a glue and keeping things in place. So those seals are in place. So get the main body of our carburetor. And we will mate these two together. And we're gonna mate together just like that. All right, double check. Make sure you don't have a larger gap on one side, skinnier gap on the other, or that you've even got like an O-ring hanging out on the outside. Now just make sure those are mated good and tight. We're gonna hold some pressure on that while we get some screws in. So that screws in there, just like that. At this point, Let's put in some of our jets and items here. This here is kind of the needle seat. For that. And I'm just gonna put in what he had in there beforehand, uh, even if it's wrong. Actually, I kinda hope it's wrong. Uh, that'll make a good video how to get the best power out of your bike. Starter jet in there. I looked up to stock jetting for the 08 uh, is very much different than honestly any of the years. And uh, what I wanna do, I'll actually show you in the manual, uh, the shop manual, what it suggests for what altitudes and whatnot. Pretty cool that they provide altitude numbers and suggestions. So, so this came with the rebuild kit. Make sure we're not leaking any gas. We'll also set the float height here. Now, we're gonna put in our accelerated pump here at the bottom of this. And we got the Lip to lip there, smooth to smooth. That goes in place there, on top there. And then the seal goes in here. And then if you can, really the main part is this little tiny seal. If you turn it over, it come out, it does. So we're just gonna use a little bit of grease again. And we're just gonna coat this guy. This actually has a flat edge and a raised edge. Uh, or kind of like a radius edge, I was to say. Um, so the flat edge goes against the cover and then that 
that radius edge sticks up. So now we got that grease in there. Position this guy. Just like that. Make sure the spring kind of like seats in there and it feels natural. Okay. Tight enough until they seat, and then whoop, just a little bit more. I don't know if you can measure whoop, but you know, that's about a 68 decibel whoop, so. Okay, let's go back in. It's actually looking to be too short. So that just slipped into place there. Now I'm coming out over here. So, for something like this, what I like to do is just slowly work my fingers around, just gently, gently pulling on it, kind of getting it warm, one. I mean, it's, I think it's 28 degrees outside right now. And uh, so we're getting it warm a little bit and kind of just barely getting it to kind of relax, kind of stretch. And then we'll put an extra amount of seal grease on it as well. It should stay for you. That. Let's see here. The so there's actually like a, a raised side and a smooth side. They go where the smooth side is facing up towards the top of the carburetor, and the raised side is facing down. That's so that way your carb hoses they can slide in nicely. Uh, but you'll be surprised how much they get kind of caught up if you try to pull them out. And so uh, for me, I actually like them to stay in place a bit better. And so. Um, I like to have those ray surfaces down. Now, I guess the opposite could be true. You could have them to where they slide up freely and then uh, they're a little bit trickier to force down. I don't know, I like them to kind of stay in place a little bit lower, um, but it is up to you entirely. And I'll put this guy here. This is like the only screw that doesn't have something special going on with it because the other one actually has that idle screw kind of attached to it in a way. Okay, so now we'll just evenly tighten these down. Really make sure that you are pushing inwards while you're twisting. Okay, just like that. threads into place. Uh, one little tech tip real quick about carburetors. So this here is the access bolt to the bottom of these carbs. And they're very flimsy. They're made out of, I believe it's, it's magnesium or if it is aluminum, shoot, the sucker is <laughs> very, very weak. And it's got this seal on it, um, but they're only supposed to be torqued down to I think it was like one foot pound maybe, um, or like 0.7 of a foot pound. But uh, they end up getting screwed in too tight. And because of that, and because it's so weak, it actually forces the head down further. But this collar ends up bending upwards like this, further and further and further until I even had it happen. Uh, it no longer makes contact with the O-ring. The O-ring gets further, actually gets further and further away from the ceiling surface, and then you can never get the darn thing to stop. So I've actually, this one is already starting to do it. Let's see if we can show over here. It's slightly concaved. There on the top there. So we've got a billet one actually on the way. All that being said, uh, that's still in the mail. <laughs> That'll get here soon. Uh, but we'll just continue on with building the rest of the carburetor out.